What is up everybody? Welcome to a brand new Let's Play, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD for the Wii U. I am Fro Show, and I am extremely excited to be starting this game because I like I've said in the update video, I've wanted to play this game for so long. I just never got around to doing it because of one, the original version of this game just flat out sucks because of how bad it looks. And two, I just never actually got the chance to do it because of other things I was doing other games and stuff like that. So now that I actually have the time to actually do this game, we are going to do a lot with it because I am going to do a 100% let's play of this game. This game has a lot to collect in it, just like every other Zelda game that has ever been made. So 100%ing this game is going to be a lot. It's going to be really difficult to do. But I'm going to do my best to do it. I'm going to be following this little guide that um, they have online from ZeldaDungeon.net. They basically do walkthroughs on every Zelda game and they tell you where everything is. They have like a whole bunch of different guides and things like that. I'm using the Wii U gamepad, by the way, because the gamepad is really good for Zelda games. Alright, so this was my um, old, my other file. I've already played through this game once. I have like all the hearts. I 100% of the game. Um, we're going to start a new quest log and we're actually not going to name ourselves Link. We're actually going to put my actual name, which is Bryant, just so you guys know. If I could stop failing at trying to type in letters, that'd be great. <laughs> Alright, so let's go down to lowercase. Oh my god, I swear. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going up with the analog stick on my gamepad, but it's like, messing up right now, so... Hopefully we can get through this. Yeah, it's B-R-I-A-N-T instead of a Y. I don't know why. <laughs> Um, Epona, I guess we can keep that as the horse name, and we'll stay with the normal mode, because hero mode is really difficult. Alright, so, um, just a little bit of a warning. Um, this game starts out pretty slow, which is how Zelda games are, are nowadays. Um, I'll be reading the text, so, uh, during the cutscenes and stuff, I'll just be reading the dialogue and stuff, because there's no voice acting in this game. Tell me, do you ever feel a strange sadness as dusk falls? They say it's the only time when our world intersects with theirs. The only time we can feel the lingering spirits, regrets of spirits who have left our world. That is why loneliness always pervades the hour of twilight. But enough talk of sadness. I have a favor to ask of you, Bryant. I was supposed to deliver something to the royal family of Hyrule the day after tomorrow. Yes, it was a task set to me by the mayor, but would you go in my steed? You have. Never been to Hyrule, right? No, we have not. In the kingdom of Hyrule, there is a great castle, and around it is Castletown, a community far bigger than our little village. And far bigger than Hyrule is the rest of the world the gods created. You should look upon it all with your own eyes. It's getting late. We should head back to the village. I will talk to the mayor about this matter. So yes, we are actually going to be going to Hyrule instead of Russell. That's the guy's name that we were just talking to. Well, not really talking to. Link just kind of sat there, stared at him, and listened. Because that's what he does. He doesn't really talk at all. Or ever, really. He only makes like sound effects when he yells and stuff. <laughs> That's Link for you, so Link's voice actor doesn't really have to do much, all he has to do is just scream into the microphone. Alright, so we got our horse Epona with us, and we were actually just in the Faron Woods, um, by the, um, the little, um, little pond or lake or spring, that's actually what it is. So, um, yeah, there's, um, the, all over the world there's different springs, as you see right here, here's the Orden Spring. So... We will actually be um, going to these different springs later on in the game. And these springs actually have a very important purpose, so you guys want to remember that for now. But yeah, here's Link's house. He, like um, Russell said, they live in like a very small village. And um, the village is called Orden Village. And um, that's his son right there. That um, He just touched his head. That's Colin, his son. And then that's his wife right over there that's pregnant again. <laughs> But um, this game starts out really slow because they want us to kind of get used to like all the controls and everything. Well, maybe not the controls, but they kind of want to show us off all the characters and everything. 
So this game starts out slower than most Zelda games. The only other Zelda game that I can think of that starts out slow, like just as slow as this one, is Skyward Sword. But that's just kind of a thing with Zelda games now. They start out very slow. Hey, Brian, you there? Hey, you mind helping me herd the goats? They ain't listening to me lately. Alright, so, um, Link, he has, um, his job, basically, is just, um, he works at the ranch, and he just has to herd the goats and things like that. Hey, where's Epona? Uh, a girl took her. She just, like, snatched our horse away. Okay, we can talk to him. Hey. Come on now, hurry up and bring Epona with you. Alright, so, as you saw, the girl took Epona away. Um, she actually took it down to, um, where the spring is because she was going to give Epona a bath. Um, so she actually wasn't stealing the horse. But that's where we have to go because we have to have Epona in order to herd the goats. Now, um, this version of the game is a little bit weird for me because, um, the ver because I originally played the Wii version of this game. And for those of you that don't know, um, this is the HD remake of the GameCube version of Twilight Princess. And when they made the Wii version, the entire world of the game was mirrored. So everything that's on the east side of the world in the Wii version is on the west side of the world in the GameCube version, and vice versa. So that's just how they made it, because for whatever reason, they made Link right-handed, and for some reason when they made him right-handed, they had to switch the whole world around, I don't know. But, so I'm a little, un diff it's a little weird for me to actually be playing this version where everything's the way that it was originally made. But that's why I played through the game once before, so I could get a little bit used to it. Oh, hi, Bryant. I washed a pony for you. Why, thank you. I don't think she was needed, she was in that much of a need for a bath, but okay. Alright. So, um, right here we have this kind of grass right here. Um, you can pick it and then blow it. And then it makes this song that's Opponent's song from Ocarina of Time. And whenever you do that, it calls Opponent to towards you. So, even if you left Opponent very far away, as long as you can find some of that grass, and that's not where we need to go, that's at least the Farron Woods. Um, if you f find some grass somewhere out in the field or something like that, and Opponent's very far away, you just pick it and you can blow into the grass and then Opponent appears out of nowhere so it's really useful because you can call her um from places where she's not even close to you at um however it really sucks that um you can't really do it at any time because you have to find that grass so right here here's the ordon village and it has like some really nice music i think um the song for this um village is a very peaceful um very peaceful song, like one that I would imagine this village to have. And um, with the original Twilight Princess, they actually didn't have fully orchestrated music. They just had, um, it sounded like it was orchestrated, but it was actually computer generated. So I'm not sure if they actually replaced that in this version of the game, if they actually changed it, because I know in Wind Waker, that Wind Waker didn't have fully orchestrated music, and then in Wind Waker HD, they changed it. Ah, uh, if it isn't Brian, if it isn't young Brian, are you going to close down the ranch for the day? I just closed the shop myself. I'm sure you know about all those mischievous monkeys that have been coming into the village lately. Those things worry me a bit. I'd better lock up tight here. I couldn't stand to have any more goods stolen. Can't trust that good-for-nothing husband to do anything right. Come on, Dad. Can't you catch a silly little monkey? Uh, well, no. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Oh, listen to us, Babylon. I didn't mean to keep you. All right, off to work with you. All right, so we need to head down to the ranch, which is over here. And right here, actually, we have the mayor of the village. Um, he's kind of a funny-looking guy. Oh, Bryant, looks like you're going to help her help Fado. Good job. He headed up to the ranch ahead of you. You go finish up your chores before the sun goes down. So he is the mayor of um of Orden Village, and he's actually the father of Ilya, the girl who actually took um, our Epona over to the spring. Alright, so right here, here's the Orden Ranch, and it has yet different music than the village. And so basically our job right now is just to 
heard all of these goats, so we're gonna have to talk to Fado real quick, though. Sorry to get you over here in such a hurry, Bryant. These guys have been awful skittish lately. They won't listen to a word I say. Sorry to ask, bud. How's a, but how's about you and a, uh, bleh, I can't talk today. Opponent heard him into the barn real quick. We ain't got much time, so can you, do you think you can do it for me? Yes. Much obliged here, bud. Okay then, go on and herd all of these little scamps into the barn for me. <laughs> Alright, so basically what we need to do, there's ten of these goats. And you want to like follow them and you want to press A to like, and it says whoop. And then like it kind of directs the goats into the direction of the barn. You want to be very careful when you do this though. Because if you do it too much, then the goats will get mad at you and then they'll turn red. And then they'll just chase you and knock you right off of Epona. So you want to be careful with that. Other than that, it's very easy. Um, we'll actually be able to do this another time later on in the game. Um, pretty soon, actually. And we'll actually get a heart piece for it. And then at that time, we'll actually be timed. Um, but this time, they're just kind of letting us get a little used to it because it's the first time we're doing this. But later on, we will be timed, and we will actually have more goats to actually put into the barn as well. Right now, we only have 10. Later on, we're going to have 20. So, um, we're just going to have to get you a little used to that. But like I said, it's really easy, though. It's really not that hard. Right, opponent, much obliged to both of y'all. I can cover everything tomorrow without having to trouble you. So just sit back and relax, bud. Oh, but how about today? Want to practice with the fences? Just wait a spell, bud. I'll get them. I'll get them fences set up. All right. So, as you can do in every Zelda game where you ride a horse, you can jump over fences. So basically, right now we're just if you're not used to jumping over fences, all you gotta do is just like um, run with Epona and then head straight into the fence, and then you press A, and then she'll just jump right over the fence. It's that easy. And then once we can just jump over them a couple times, and then once we're done, we can just head out the exit right here and jump over the fence. So yeah, that is all that we need to do there. And um, for this Let's Play, I plan on doing like around 15 to 20 minute videos. Um, I am actually not going to save right now. To save your progress during the game, press down on the D-pad and then choose save game in the bottom left corner of the collection screen. So yes, you can literally save at any time, but then after you do certain a certain um something in the game, like if you beat like a dungeon or something, it always just pops up giving you the option to save right there. However, for the sake of the let's play, I don't want to save because I don't want anything bad to happen with the recording and then I got to start the whole game over. So that's why I'm not going to be saving throughout the let's play. Hey, wake up, Brian. It's morning already. Of course, I'll be saving when I'm not recording, but not in the recording session. Alright, so this is our house right here. Um, Blink lives alone, so there's actually nobody else here. Um, he climbs up ladders like that. The little simple looking house, it's, it's nice I guess. Right here we have um, the basement. However, as you can see, once we go down here, we cannot see a thing down here. It's completely black. We'll have to actually get an item that will let us see down here. I remember um, the first time I played this game, I actually got lost down here. And I couldn't find my way out. I couldn't find the ladder. Which, if you literally look at the all the far left of the map, you can see where the ladder actually is. I guess I was just really stupid or something, because I couldn't find the ladder at all. Anyway, we're going to walk out of our house and go see what the kids want. So, like I said, it's, this game is very slow. we got a lot of tutorial-based stuff happening right now. Because um, we're going to get a new item soon. Oh, Brian, did you hear? They're selling a slingshot at the store right now. A slingshot! I wonder how powerful it is. I, I need, I must try it. Tallow, if you and Mallow want it so badly, just buy it at my parents' shop. Do you see any rupees in my hand? I can't afford that thing. Come on, Beth, why can't you just loan it to us for a while? You know I'd get in trouble for that. If you, go want, if you two want it, save up your allowances or something. But our allowances are terrible. Uh, I wish I was born into a family with a slingshot instead of a one with a water wheel. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, the kids want a slingshot. And we actually have Colin over here. And it's at um, Beth's store. It was that um, one lady that had the good-for-nothing husband. It's at their store. So we actually have to get enough money to go buy it. Hi, Brian. I finished the fishing rod I was making. 
I thought I'd give it to you first thing in the morning, but... My dad said, you just wait until Bryant comes to get it. That's why I didn't bring it to you. Dad's out today, so would you ask my mom about it? I think she's by the river. Alright, so we have two things that we need to do. We have to go and get um, the fishing rod from Colin's mom, and we also have to go and get some money in order to buy the slingshot. But, I think we're going to end off the episode right here, I think... Um, it was a good, this is a good length for an episode. Let me know what you guys think about the episode length. Um, just bear with me for right now. These first few episodes are going to be very slow of just talking and going around and collecting things. So, just bear with me for a few episodes and then we'll actually get to the good parts of this game. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here so you'll be notified of whenever I make new videos. Make sure you click on mobile notifications because... You want to really make sure that you get those notifications because YouTube just is being stupid with this for some reason. If you want to, you can go down in the description below, check out my friend Kofi's channel. He's the one that made the thumbnail for this video, and he'll, he's going to be making vi thumbnails for my videos from now on. So go support him, subscribe to him. He recently hit 400 subscribers, so congrats to him, and hopefully he has more success in the future. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Fro Show. And I'll see you guys in the next video. 